What's up everybody, Nate here. And the car market in the United States has kind of gone on a crazy ride over the last couple of years. Usually when you purchase a vehicle, the price of that vehicle over time simply goes down, but that is definitely not what we've seen since the pandemic began. Demand sparked for vehicles at the beginning of the pandemic because of really low interest rates, and that led to really low inventory and supply chain issues regarding microchips. Prices then skyrocketed, but now prices are starting to crash again. So what exactly is going on? Well, if you look at used car prices in the United States, those prices are falling faster than they pretty much have in over a decade. A used vehicle in April 2022 went for around $31,000, and today it's going for around $29,000. So the price has rapidly decreased in a very short period of time. That is because demand is suddenly falling for vehicles of all different types, so used and new vehicles, and that is directly related to two things. The first First is interest rates. Interest rates are going to be the biggest determining factor on whether or not somebody is going to be able to afford something. So that goes for a mortgage and that also goes for a car loan. However, interest rates in the United States have not been an easy thing to navigate for the average American consumer as the Federal Reserve has been raising them quickly and aggressively since pretty much the middle parts of 2022. This is all in a response to inflation. We've had inflated prices and the car market Market and the mortgage market and in prices for food and services for a very long time. And the Federal Reserve needs to ensure price stability. So they're raising their interest rates to bring down demand. And that is exactly what we're seeing across the board. And a car loan works very much differently than say a mortgage does. When you get a mortgage, you're typically locked in for say 30 years. Sometimes it's 15 years and sometimes it's 10 years. But the average car loan is only around five to seven years in the United United States. So you are buying something for around 20 to maybe $40,000 if you're looking at a used car, but your payments are going to be a lot more each month because they're spread out amongst fewer months. That means that interest rates have a much bigger effect on the car market than they do something like a mortgage because now you're going to have to pay a significantly higher amount even if interest rates go up by a half a percent or a full percent. The Federal Reserve raising interest rates affects a banks or a car dealership's ability to borrow money. So if they have a harder time borrowing money from the Federal Reserve and the United States Treasury, that means they're going to charge you a higher premium to finance your vehicle from them. So you're going to be paying a lot more for your car and Americans today simply can't afford to pay these new prices. Now the kicker here is there was a lot of Americans who could not afford to buy a car before, even in 2020 and in 2021 when the market markets were sort of booming. This is because we had a lot of stimulus and the great resignation meant that people were moving jobs and getting pay raises pretty much immediately. So with all of that added income, that kind of meant that Americans could go out and get a bigger vehicle. They could get a car that they really wanted to because they had so much more money in the bank. And for a while, government intervention and stimulus meant that Americans could afford those bigger car payments. We had the mortgage moratorium, we had rent payments essentially paused, student loan payments are still paused and Americans had additional unemployment benefits. So even if they were to lose their job during that time, they could potentially still afford their payments. Now that is really good for your bank. That's really good for your auto company. And it made sure that a lot of our essential industries in the United States that employ hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people stayed afloat. But in 2023, and even in the latter parts of 2022, most of that money has has pretty much all dried up. So now Americans are resuming those payments and they have inflation to deal with. So when they go to the grocery store, things are a lot more expensive now and they're not able to put as much money into their car payments. And we've actually seen car repossessions or repos start to rise significantly in the United States. As Americans have a harder time affording things, well, now they start to cut back on the things in their life. So that usually starts with with all of your unnecessary spending so they don't travel as much, they don't go out and buy things like luxury meals, they don't go on vacations. All of those optional consumer spendings typically go out the window first and then all of those startups and businesses are hit hard. And then if things continue to get worse in an economy, consumers then look at all of the other things that they can essentially cut out and a lot of the times that is their car payment. Because at the end of the day, it sucks not to have a car but many Americans are going to continue to pay for 
things like their mortgage because it sucks a whole lot more to not have a house. So you have a large group of Americans that stopped paying their car payment over the last couple of years because they simply couldn't afford it anymore and because they may have taken on a little too much. And you have another group of Americans that simply can't afford a car right now because interest rates are way too high and they are probably just going to continue to go up throughout 2023. That means the car market is going to continue to get hit hard as fewer and fewer Americans are able to purchase a vehicle and prices and demand are slowly going to fall. Now the other side of this has to do with new vehicles being created and it has to do with all of those car repossessions because when a car is repossessed it's then put back on the market to be sold and there are some Americans right now that are able to purchase a vehicle and when you have higher inventory and all of these used vehicles coming back on the market that means that prices are going to come down so even though interest rates are going up prices are going down and that's helping some Americans to purchase a vehicle. Used vehicle prices are getting hit the hardest here because Americans are looking at the price difference between a used vehicle and a new vehicle and they're realizing that they'd rather just pay a few extra thousand dollars and get a brand new vehicle that's never been touched before rather than buy a used vehicle that has a whole lot of problems and is a very similar price. Not only that, but we have seen Taiwan and a lot of other other countries around the world start to manufacture a lot more microchips. These microchips basically are the brains to most of our electronics and that is true for cars as well. During the pandemic we simply couldn't make enough of them, we couldn't refine enough of the materials in order to get the microchips and then ship them across the world to the United States so they could be put into a car. That has changed though. The microchip problem isn't as big of an issue as it was back then. We still have some supply constraints but for the the most part, manufacturers are able to get their hands on the microchip. So we are seeing new vehicles come out and people are not as far back ordered as they were in 2020 and in 2021. That is an influx of supply, but again, interest rates are still too high. So the bottom line here is this, demand is falling for cars in the United States. And this is a pretty good measure for our entire economic health. Like I said before, it sucks not having a vehicle and vehicles are a necessity in the United States. So if you see Americans choosing not to make their car payment or choosing to stick with the car they have, well, that is an indication that there just is not enough money going around right now. And it's an indication that Americans are being hurt financially. Auto payments right now in the US are sitting at around four to maybe $600. And if you couple that with a mortgage that is around $1,000 a month, now Americans are spending most of their income on their car and their house. Now, Typically, that is true of any economic situation. Americans spend the most on their car and house no matter what. Now, I'm not saying that's right, but that's the truth. Why this is concerning today is because we have a lot of other things going on in our economy, like inflation is still highly elevated, which means Americans have to spend a lot more on other things like food and groceries and services and pretty much anything else that they need to buy. Not to mention, we have a struggling economy in general. A lot of your startups and a lot of your tech companies companies on Wall Street are not able to bring in the investor interest or the consumer interest in order to make sales or get the funding they need to survive. So they have been laying off people. In January alone, tech companies laid off around 100,000 people. The only way that Americans afford a mortgage, the only way that Americans afford a car payment is through their job. That's how they qualify for a mortgage. That's how they qualify for an auto loan. But without an income, they're not able to qualify. And without an income, Income, they're not able to pay their auto bills. So the more layoffs that you see, the harder the mortgage market and the auto markets are going to get hit in the United States. Americans right now don't make enough to keep up with inflation as it is. And then with everything else going on, there's a potential that they could no longer be able to make their car payments. And that hurts our entire economy. But at the end of the day, it's going to send car prices and home prices in a downward spiral. And the one thing you need to understand about vehicles and vehicle prices is that buying a car is not an investment. I mean, unless you're going to buy some six figure plus super rare vehicle, then maybe that could be an asset and there's an argument for that. But for the average American, buying say like a Ford F-150 in 2023 is not going to be an investment. Cars lose value over time and the market is finally starting to readjust to where it was pre-pandemic. This is normal to see car prices and used 
used vehicle prices going down. What wasn't normal is used vehicle prices going up in value over time. Keep in mind too that vehicles, whether you get a new vehicle or a used vehicle, they are going to cost you money. Just like your house, there is a lot of maintenance that you have to keep up on. There are things that you need to buy for your car every so often and the more you drive it, the more expensive it becomes. The market though is falling back to reality and the times for used vehicle owners to make a profit on their vehicle might be slipping away. And it might be time for the used car bubble to ride off into the sunset. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel and I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.